thought we would work on some journal cards and I started trying to get everything prepped and do you know to be kind of organized and I just today can't work that way so I'm sorry I don't have anything to show you at the beginning um, I'm just gonna grab some stuff and we're just gonna just do this um, I have not really prepped ahead of time other than I had uh, some of these images left over from the uh, botanical wildflower kit and I thought I really want to use these and I want to turn these into journal cards and I'm not going to worry about the fact that the orientation's not the correct way because this is just going to be you know the background for some color so I just thought I'd turn the camera on and let's just jump in and see what we can make um, I know in my mind kind of what I want to do and I'm thinking I'm just going to cut down this image because like I said these are left over and then, actually this will just be quicker let me just cut it out this way because I'm not going to use it as a tag I just want that image to be the focal point and then we'll start building from there. So I'm going to just trim this down. Actually, um, I'm going to trim these down a little bit more just because Actually, no, those will be fine. Those will still work. Um, it's just I've got a journal that I'm working on, and I thought it might be nice to be able to use these when I'm done in that journal. So the other thing, I'm just going to set these over here. I want to use up some of this um, Stampin' Up! cardstock I've had for a while. I think that green will work if I can tone it down. Now you're probably going to think, what is she doing? This is um, a Sizzix... Oh, da, 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 da. What is it called here? There's the number. And this is a frame oval with ornate edge, uh, edges. So what I thought, because I don't need the whole thing cut out, I'm just going to cut a couple of these out and I'm hoping that this is going to work. It's just kind of something I've had in my mind. It might not. It might not work, but I'm going to cut them out in the hopes that it will. And the other good thing about that, if this works then I can make use of a lot of these little pieces I've got left over. Alright, let me get this out of the way. So I'll sit that one over there. Uh, we'll just work on this one for now because this might take too long for me to do both of them. OK. 
Okay. See how wide that is. Yeah, I'll just go. I'm hoping that this is going to. what I'm hoping. Okay, I'm going to sit that over. Let me grab a big shot. This is one of those, it's like a postage uh, die. Okay, bear with me guys, I'm going to try. to get this cut. I'm hoping that it's going to be thick enough. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So now, let me see, I want to get a little bit of gesso on that. Just putting a little bit of gesso here and there, guys. I, and then we'll come back and distress this, and hopefully it'll pull all those colors 
um, together. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. I've got the fan on here, so it, it's going to dry pretty quick, I think. Okay, just a second, guys. Okay, I'm going to ink this up. Okay, so you can see we went from <laughs> from that to that. I think that's that's much better. I'm going to put a little bit more gesso over that because I want that really blended because the, the contrast you see is just too much and that is going to make it you know, just a really nice subtle background. So this little frame that I've cut out, I'm just going to put some of this script stamp on there. And then now just distress that. Just distressing around this image now. So, again, let's just a bit more around the edges of this. darkened up. And the gesso will help. It's kind of makes the um, the ink, you know, it gives it something kind of to hold on to so it, it, it makes it easier to get those darker edges. Alright, so I like the idea of that being back there. And then I want this just peeking underneath. And I want the numbers to show. And then I thought it would be nice to have that framed out. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to kind of shape this a little bit more.
so that it'll kind of stand up off of that paper. All right, so let's get a little bit of cheesecloth. And I'm going to just put a little bit of this glue down just to hold that cheesecloth. And I'm going to just kind of fray the edges because I just want that poking out a bit. Now, I'm just going to get a bit of glue here and there. So I want to get this down and then we'll start building it up. I'm just going to center that. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Now, before I put this down, I'm going to get some laces. I want some laces and a bit more of the cheesecloth hanging out. These are just some laces I have in my drawer and I'm just going to see how those look. I always try to use my off cuts first and then if I can't find anything that suits I then get into my other lace drawer. But for stuff like this, because it's going behind, it's nice if you can just go ahead and use what you already got. I'm just going to go ahead and get some of the cheesecloth kind of tacked down. Get over here. And then I know that's going to go there. So I'm going to try to have some of this lace up here. that piece will be pretty right there. Alright, let me get my Fabri-Tac glue. Just going to put a little doll up there because that should hold it in place once I get get everything uh, down. And I'm putting that kind of at an angle. And I'll just uh, turn over these corners slightly. And after everything's in its place, I'll come back and, and distress that a little bit more. If you want to roll the corners up, you can take your little pokey tool, and that works really, really well for that. Let me go ahead and ink that because I don't want that white showing. Okay, we're getting there guys, getting there, getting there, getting there. Okay, so now let's just get
Okay, I've just got a little bit more lace here. I think it would be nice. This has got some... It's in, uh, you know, like lace in tulle there, and I think that's going to be pretty. Just a little bit of it up here. Poking out. Because I don't want to cover all those, the number. I really like the number showing. This is really weird. It's like, I don't know what I've done here. That's like two layers. Huh. Well, that's weird. It's, uh, that was definitely cardstock. That is really strange. I have never, ever had that happen. Huh. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe I did grab up. I thought it was, um, a sheet of cardstock, but that's really weird. It must have been two pieces of paper together. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But anyways, just have to glue that down. All right, let me grab. Let me see what kind of a tab I'm going to put on that. Okay, I just punched it out of um, one of the coordinating papers. So you can see with all the layers how are we doing on time? Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. Uh, with all of the layering, it's you're not you know you don't know that that's going in the wrong direction. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, I like that there. Okay, let's get this on, guys, and we are nearly done. So now you can see, and what I like about this is it's using up things that um, I know I printed out that I knew were going to be too big for um, the journals that I'm working in. So I love it when I can make use of it because it's like, you know, sometimes I print things out in a batch and then like now working with the small journals um, so this works out really really nice because I was able to use that because once you've printed it it's a shame not to but I really like how that's come out um, 
And then on the back, of course, there's journaling space, but that'll fit into a pocket or it could be clipped in the, to the journal. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Um, and I'll be back very soon with some more things. You guys take care, and I'll see you soon.